integrity. I always consider that is the very basic, you know, core value of uh, you know professional, because no matter how smart you are or how capable you are, but if you have an integrity problem, then that is the big big problem. Hello, I'm Magali Laguerre Wilkinson. Welcome to Ethics in Business in Their Own Words. ACCA, the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, has teamed up with Carnegie Council and CFA Institute to produce this interview series, launched in 2018 for Global Ethics Day. The series features global business leaders exploring how businesses are preparing for an ethical future in the face of challenges presented by globalization, technology, and human psychology. Today, we're talking to Jennifer Tan, CEO of Alipay HK. Alipay, established in China by the Alibaba Group, is the world's largest mobile payment platform. In early 2017, Ant Financial launched the Alipay HK brand in Hong Kong as a joint venture with CK Hutchison. Hong Kong residents can use Alipay HK to make secure mobile payments in stores, supermarkets, taxis, restaurants, food markets, and other retail outlets. Thank you very much for indulging us with your time and for doing this. You've, you've achieved so much. It's, it's in your CV. We <laughs> see this. You've, you've had an impressive dedication to training and development. You're an ACC qualified accountant, so you're, you're familiar with it all. You became a fellow of ACCA in 1993. Has the ethical focus of your work changed over that time? Mm. 1993, uh, that means everybody knows about my age to become a fellow member. Um, actually, uh, at that time, although you know, we're always talking about ethics, ethical standard, but uh, there's not a very really clear definition about you know, what means ethics, because everybody can have you know, their interpretation. And probably you're aware that for ACCA, uh, you know, when we're talking about you know, to introduce ethics as part of the you know, module, it's back to 2008. And actually, we are the, ACCA is the first professional body to do that. So when you're talking about 1993, at that time, although everybody talking about that, but my, what mean to me may be different to another professional accountant. So what it means to you, how do you implement it in your position right now? When we're talking about ethic, we always say, oh, okay, you should not do something which is not good you know, for a company, or you should not you know, do something which has a conflict of interest, that kind of things. But I think uh, nowadays, it's quite different. First, professional bodies like ACCA, they already you know, include you know, um, uh, ethics you know, as a very center of the, you know, their qualification. And there are lots of courses being uh, uh, taken out. And also one most important thing is that now it is not only just talking about okay, whether you, know, you should do it or not do it. If we find you know, somebody doing something unethical, we actually also have the responsibility to voice it out, to challenge it. Voicing it out, challenging it. Let's just say that in the past, people have felt intimidated or, <laughs> or they wanted to muzzle themselves so they wouldn't challenge their future in a company. Um, how do you protect people who see unethical business practices and how do you protect them to come forward? So this is very important in the company as a leader, actually we need to set the tone, okay? We need to emphasize on that. So for example, take uh, you know, Alipay as an example. Uh, in Hong Kong, you know, we, we have uh, you know, our business assurance hat. And so uh, we make it clear that, okay, if you find anything which is uh, unethical, actually, you know, you can report to our business assurance hat. And you know who definitely you know report to me, and then we will study the case to see what happened. And and other than that is that uh, actually we protect you know the one who you know voice it out because you you, you must so even you don't you don't, you just uh, keep an, an, an anonymous you, you don't have name we will accept that. But of course we will study whether this is a real case or you just you know put something you know on someone else. But I think uh, the most important is the culture 
of the company. What is the greatest ethical challenge facing Alipay and, and your industry in general? Mm. You know, um, as an e-wallet company, actually we are still pretty new. We, we, we only uh, set up uh, you know, about a year. And most of the noises, I would say the noises or the challenge is that people is not quite um, you know, um, understand about e-wallet because they would think about, okay, you gather a lot of my data, how will you use our data? Will you use it ethically? You know, in Hong Kong, actually people is quite concerned about their data privacy. So they think about, okay, you see wallet, you know my spending behavior, what will you use that? Will you sell my data? But we, we, that's why we need to do a lot of education to that. We, you know, say for example, uh, in our case, if you are just a new user and you think that, okay, you, 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 your, your spending level no need to be a, a, a high amount because we're based on certain spending level, just a, a mobile number, you can register and be, and be our user. And in that case, that means I don't know who you are. Okay, I always tell them that I don't know you, I don't, I, no need for me to know who you are. I only know an account, okay, this is a user, okay, and based on, say, your spending, I know that, okay, it's a lady because she go to buy cosmetic products, and maybe, you know, she'll go to supermarket very frequently, so mm, definitely have a family, and because based on their spending level, we can guess, okay, or they pay, uh, uh, you know, they settle their telecom bills, they settle their, their, you know, utility bills, so we can, you know, have their profile. We did not need to ask our user. And also we will not ask those very sensitive personal data. What we want to do is that, okay, we know them and we want to use it for better service for them. And we will not, you know, sell those data because for us, we think that this is, you know, very important, you know, because we, we, gather, we gather the information. We are not using our users' data to reserve and then earn money. We actually want to serve them better and they become a very loyal user to us. So right now in these times, we're dealing with a lot of, of trust factors yes. uh, within social media. Yeah. So, and, and I'm not gonna name names, of course, but I'm going back to the trust factor. So you're telling me that just with a phone number, there is enough there. How do you still convince that audience to trust you, to trust that the information that they're giving you is just going to stay within the parameters yes. of Alipay and it's not going to go out? This is a very good question, you know, especially for a new startup. So uh, what we can do is that first, you know, I need to do more education, talk, you know, talk to, you know, a, a, a lot of media or our user group. And second thing is that I think it is, uh, you know, uh, we actually very seriously, you know, uh, look at our system, look at our flow, to make sure that our data will not be, you know, subject to any, you know, risk because our user trusts us. And now we only have about a year, so so far, you know, touch wood, okay, everything. And I believe it is, uh, you know, the credibility on the trust need to be, you know, accumulate. Yeah. The time goes, they will know that, okay, we actually is a very professional company. We internally, you know, we have very high ethical standard. You know, we, people always challenge me, oh, what's your business model? You know, you do, I say first, we will not do, you know, we will not sell the data because that is not our business. So our business model is that actually, as mentioned that, if we have, uh, we, we do, you know, I would say target selling, okay. We know that, okay, say, we know our user, okay, they buy a ticket, air ticket, so okay, they, maybe they need uh, insurance, you know, travel insurance, so we may push those to them. And we actually earn, we share the commission from the merchant. We earn from the merchant, we are not earned from our user. I but, see. But, but the key is that, okay, we must make sure our user is a happy user. They like to, they will be our, you know, loyalty user, they will use more on our platform. And that's how, you know, our business model. I want to ask you a little bit about diversity. Mm. Um, you're a woman, mm. you're, you're running Alipay. How do you make it equal with men and women? Is that something, I know that qualifications are the key, but how do you make it an equal partnership? Mm. Actually, this is a, you know, a lot of people ask me about that question. 
personally, you know, I never, you know, I never think about because they are men, I'm woman. I never think about that. I'm actually more thinking that okay, I'm a qualified accountant. They are also qualified accountants, so there's no difference. And even you know, when I work with engineer, with any, I never think about because whether they are men or whether woman who is better, who is not so good. So I, I never think about you know from that. I only think that okay, it's the job. The job's here. Okay, we all see who can achieve. That is the capability. The capability, you know, just kind of fat. It's not because of your gender. Have you found yourself in a situation where you're in a boardroom or you get you're, you arrive at a meeting and you're the only woman there? Oh, actually, in the old days, uh, quite common. But I think nowadays a little bit better. Yeah, we, we, we see more and more, you know, women in the boardroom. <laughs> You're clearly passionate also about voluntary work oh. and uh, you're a member on various boards. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about um, your voluntary work? Mm, actually, um, you know, uh, I have been, uh, you know, a, a Hong Kong committee member of ACCA Hong Kong. And, uh, you know, I, I've joined, you know, the CP, uh, what they call the PD subcom for a long time. Uh, PD Sarkom means the professional uh, development. But as, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I'm, I, I'm somebody who believes in this lifelong you know, learning. So uh, when I come across, you know, I find that C, uh, ACCA got this uh, P, uh, professional development committee. I think, oh, that's good because you know, uh, I've, been, I, I've been commercial well, and I still want to make sure you know, myself keep, keep abreast with the updated knowledge. So I think this is good. And because you know, during the committee, we were talking about a lot of new ideas, new, uh, uh, new accounting standards. And, and on the other hand is that what we work is that, okay, we, we also consider, okay, what kind of training we can provide to our members. And, you know, this is quite a nice with my, you know, as I said, I believe in <laughs> lifelong learning. And, and so, you know, I start, you know, uh, as their subcommittee member for a long time. And because of that, then I also, you know, uh, uh, work for other voluntary work. Say, for example, I, I was a, a program advisor for a university in Hong, uh, in one, uh, one of the universities in Hong Kong uh, uh, for a master program. And, you know, actually, uh, I like to, you know, get more in something related to education and also to, you know, just to deal with the students. Okay, because uh, I think uh, uh, quite in, in my time, as I say, we don't have internet. <laughs> and so, you know, we want, if we want to get, you know, uh, some uh, uh, information or, or, or knowledge, it's quite challenging. Unless I say, okay, I know some friends, say, just I say, oh, I know somebody who studied ACC, so I may know something. So now I got the opportunity, I would like to, you know, share my experience you know, with uh, those uh, uh, young generation and especially say like a program advisor, I think it's good because we are actually held a, a university to think about what kind of uh, a subject or topics, you know, they should incorporate in the program for those master uh, students. You're always constantly learning. Mm. You're keeping up with the times, you're educating yourself all the time, but you're also a mentor. Yes. So explain a little bit of your mentorship work and how do you combine that with what you keep learning? <laughs> Um, actually, I start my mentorship with ACCA first because I think back to um, 2007, I'm, I think I'm one of the first batch of their mentors at that time because they think that, okay, uh, they would like to see a way how can we help those uh, uh, young members or people who are going to be members. And as you know, I, I always, you know, consider, you know, lifelong, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, learning. And also during my young age, I find that it is very difficult uh, for me to, you know, understand a lot about, you know, say like career or, you know, what I can do better because I don't know, you know, there's no internet. <laughs> I, I can't search around just uh, by myself. And, and so, you know, when ACC approached me, I said, okay, good. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm pleased to do that because I like to talk to the young generation, especially I, I hope that, you know, I can share my experience with them and which can help them to maybe to make, uh, you know, uh, some uh, decision. And on the other hand, I've been in telecom industry for over 20 something years. And other than telecom industry, it seems 
I don't know a lot of things. You know, say for example, like the healthcare thing, or uh, you know, uh, some other industry. So it is good that okay, we 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 work together. I also learn from other, you know, industry expert. So I think it is quite good. You know, I can learn new thing from other mentors or from you know uh, some colleagues, and I can also pass my you know learning to the younger generation. I think this is how you know society work, right? One of your fellow ACCA members, David Wu, um, talks about the profession's uh, global, uh, global code of conduct, the IFAC code that covers five areas, integrity, objectivity, professional competence and due care, confidentiality, and professional behavior. For you, Jennifer Tan, which one matters most? Integrity. I always consider that is the very basic you know, core value of uh, you know, professional. Because no matter how smart you are or how capable you are, but if you have an integrity problem, then that is the big, big problem. And because some, you know, when I talk to some young generation, actually I find that uh, you know, they have different understanding of integrity. They just think that, oh, okay, I just do something which, which may be you know, to my own benefit, but doesn't hurt others. So who cares? But I don't think so, because you think that you know you didn't hurt others because you don't have the full picture. Maybe your one decision actually you have a lot of uh, negative impact on the society, because nowadays a lot of uh, young generation they don't have that you know idea. They just think that oh, okay, I'm not okay. I'm not doing something which is uh, you know just make my company worse. So what's wrong? But I always say, okay, it's not only you, you are not only looking for the best interests of yourself, your best interests of your company, but you should look at the best interests of you know the community, the society. That's very important. The the broader picture. Yes, yes, because we are all part of the society.